Hi there everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. Today is Monday, August 16th. Thank you for being here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. We start off with information about when we can expect to hear from the President of the United States, Joe Biden, today about the situation in Afghanistan. He'll be addressing the nation today. Those remarks scheduled to have begun at 345 PM. Now, this will be the first time that President Biden is addressing the nation in the last week after the Taliban swiftly routed the Afghan military in Afghanistan and in light of recent events over the weekend and today in Kabul. Now, what we know from National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan speaking today is he said that the speed which the cities fell with was much greater than anyone anticipated. He blamed the government's fall on the Afghans themselves, telling NBC's Today show that the U.S. ultimately could not give Afghan security forces the will, that was his word, to fight to defend their fledgling democracy. Now, what we learned on Monday in Kabul is there was a rush on the airport while Afghans have been trying to flee the Taliban takeover. Thousands of Afghans rushed into Kabul's main airport on Monday, some so desperate to escape the Taliban that they clung to a military jet as it took off and several people died. Seven people actually died in the chaos. That's the number confirmed from U.S. officials speaking on condition of anonymity. Now, if you're not up to speed on what's going on here, President Donald Trump had struck a deal with the Taliban last year to withdraw all American troops this year in 2021. Now, that was in return for a promise for the Taliban to stop attacking foreign forces and to cut ties with Al Qaeda. President Trump had set a deadline for that of May of this year. Now, when President Joe Biden took office, he changed that deadline, but he did accept the deal and had expressed that he had long wanted to end America's longest war and bring those troops home. Now, the deadline that he initially set, President Biden, was September 11th of this year, but he changed that to August 31st, coming up very quickly after warnings about the optics of that original date being the anniversary of the September 11th attacks. Now, the Taliban offensive throughout the country of Afghanistan has stunned American officials. Just days before these insurgents entered Kabul with little, if any, resistance at all, according to what we're hearing from people on the ground, a U.S. military assessment predicted it could take months for the capital to fall. And as we see, it definitely was not months. Now, this route that's happening in Afghanistan right now, it threatens to erase 20 years of Western efforts to remake Afghanistan. There have been tens of thousands of Afghans killed, as well as more than 3,500 U.S. and allied troops killed in this effort. The initial invasion in 2001 drove the Taliban from power and scattered al-Qaeda, which had planned the 9-11 attacks while being sheltered in Afghanistan. We'll give you updates as we have them on the situation. Of course, we'll have the updates of what President Biden says. And later tonight, Lester Holt, the NBC Nightly News anchor, he has an interview with retired General David Petraeus talking about the situation there. And he asked him today, did the U.S. just lose the war in Afghanistan? And here is what retired General Petraeus said. He said, certainly the outcome is catastrophic, that it's heartbreaking, that it's tragic, and that he thinks there were alternative approaches, including options that should have been considered that he has counseled about himself for many years. He said, what's important though at this moment is time is that we realize that there are many so far that have been left behind and we are where we are now and we need to focus on that. He also said we need to do everything we can with all the resources available to us to ensure that we meet the moral obligation to the people left behind in Afghanistan. Turning back to what's happening here in the greater Ohio area up here in northern Ohio, there was someone taken to the hospital at Cedar Point after a small metal object fell from the top thrill dragster to a female guest. Now, that person was taken to the hospital on Sunday afternoon. This was while she was waiting in line that she was struck with this. Here is a statement from Cedar Point. They delivered this statement to our partner station, WTOL, in Toledo on Sunday. It was about 4.30 in the afternoon. They said a small metal object became disengaged from a train at the Top Thrill Dragster roller coaster as it was ending its run. It came into contact with a female guest waiting in line for the ride. The park's own EMS team and the Sandusky Fire Department responded immediately and the guest was taken to the hospital for care. At this time, the focus is on the guest and the family. Now, that was a statement 
delivered yesterday. We'll have continued updates on what we know about that, but as of then, the age of the victim, not known. The extent of the victim's injuries, not known. Cedar Point said the ride was remaining closed until a full safety investigation could be completed. Now let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers. We're taking a closer look at these after having spent some time addressing these once a week. We're going to take a look at them today. Here is what is potentially concerning, especially about these numbers. Usually at the start of a week, we see lower numbers because there's decreased reporting through the agencies over the weekend. But over the weekend, we've seen high numbers and today we see high numbers. What we see today, according to the Ohio Department of Health, is 1,814 new COVID-19 cases reported and they were in the thousands all weekend long. On Sunday, there were 1,977 new COVID cases reported and on Saturday, there were 2,460 new COVID cases reported. Now, these numbers much higher than we've been seeing on the weekends. Right now, also, the hospitalizations on the rise, 1,450 people currently hospitalized related to COVID-19. That's an increase of 93 from yesterday in the last day. And of those uh, 1,458 in the hospital, 453 of them are in the intensive care unit. That's a big increase in the last day. That's 382 known ICU cases increased in the last day. Speaking of COVID-19, if you want to see Jimmy Buffett and the Coral Reefer Band perform at Blossom Music Center, that's happening Saturday, September 25th. Those tickets go on sale Friday. You will have to be vaccinated against COVID-19 or if you have a uh, proof of an exemption or a medical exemption preventing your vaccination or you're under the age of 12, so not eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine, you will be able to go if you get a negative COVID-19 test within 48 hours of the event. So you'll have to get that within 48 hours prior to that Saturday, September 25th show. Now those tickets, if you want to get them, they go on sale this Friday, August 20th at 10 a.m. Now this is a live nation policy that's happening at Blossom Music Center. This Jimmy Buffett's concert is after his release of his first studio album in seven years, Life on the Flip Side which might be a great idea if you're looking to take someone on a date. And that's the topic of my Three Things to Know podcast this week. There was a recent survey that came out from a company called Clever Real Estate. And according to their metrics, Cleveland has been ranked as the seventh best city for single people. Now, this is when compared to the 50 most populated metropolitan areas in the U.S. So we had to see what it's actually like out on the streets in the dating world. So I talked with two Cleveland singles, one of them Adam Gokowski, another Allison Simmons, and we brought in an expert. It's Just Lunch Cleveland matchmaker Katie Malone, and we talk about what the real scene is like in Cleveland and if it holds up to what they say in that survey about the dating scene in Cleveland. We talk about the ratio of single to married people. We talk about where people are meeting potential love interests, the average cost of a first date or just a date in general, and the variety of options for date night. Those are a few of the things that we talk about. It's a great conversation. Also, before I let them go, I get recommendations from Katie, Allison, and Adam about the date night spots that you need to know in NEO. You know, of course, we always include that hidden gem, seg hidden gem segment. And a reminder about Match's chief dating expert, Rachel Diauto. She was a previous guest on the podcast. We talked about what dating was like during the pandemic with Zoom and all of that stuff. She's a good follow on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and we talk about that and her new book coming out. So if you want to check that out, it's at WKYC.com slash three things to know. You can find it on every podcast platform. It's also on our WKYC YouTube page, so you can watch and you can also listen if that's how you want to get your podcast. Now, here is an update for parents. If you have a child in a public Ohio school, here's great news. All students in public Ohio schools will get free breakfast and free lunch at school for the 2021-2022 academic year. The Ohio Department of Education says every child is eligible. You don't have to register or sign up. And they say the more people who participate, the better. This program comes from waivers from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And kids can get these free meals, by the way, whether they're going to school in person or online from home. So... Be aware of that if you have a child in public school in the state of Ohio. And speaking of things that remind us of children, Nike has now unveiled its Cleveland's Little League Classic jersey because the tribe will take the field for the 2021 Little League Classic on Sunday, and they will look the part. Today, 
We got a peek at the jerseys and the tribe will play the Los Angeles Angels. They'll be facing off at Muncie Bank Ballpark at Historic Bowman Field in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, and they'll be pullover style tops and a little league inspired twist. They'll have regions instead of cities on the jersey. It'll be Great Lakes for the tribe and West for the Angels. Now you can get one of these if you want. They're 135 bucks and they are both available for purchase on Nike.com for both teams. For the Tribe, you can get a Jose Ramirez, Shane Bieber, or a plain version for that jersey. And then for the Angels, you can get a Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, Anthony Rendon, or a plain version for that jersey. And speaking of sports, one more thing to let you know before we go here, WKYC.com's high school football game of the week is back. Now this is something that was carried out a little bit differently throughout the pandemic. We couldn't do the voting aspect of it because you all get a say in which game will be the featured Friday night game as high school football returns. And uh, speaking of football returning, hey, how about that Cleveland Browns preseason win this weekend, right? You know, the preseason doesn't really count, but you do love to see it. So, okay, back to the WKYC.com high school football game of the week. The contenders this week, here are your options for where you would like to send our incredible sports team. Euclid versus Aurora, Benedictine versus Walsh Jesuit, or Avon versus Brunswick. Now, voting is open today and it closes on Wednesday. You can vote in the poll at WKYC.com. And if you vote, by the way, and you provide your name and email address or your Facebook account, you'll also have a chance to win a free meal from Chick-fil-A. Once those results are in, 3 News Digital reporters Dave Dino Di Natale and Tyler Carey will announce the winning game on Wednesday in their high school football preview show. And they'll also look at the rest of the big matchups for the week. And then on Friday, Dino and a to-be-determined co-host will call the game live on WKYC.com, the WKYC app, and the WKYC YouTube page. And Tyler will also pop in with analysis and scoring updates from around the area. Very, very excited to have that high school football coverage back as we know and love it on WKYC.com. That's it for your 3 News Now update today for Monday, August 16th. I will see you next up on What's New with your trending stories in the Clicking in Cleveland segment, and I will see you back here tomorrow for more 3 News Now.